Hello, my name is Nedrim Key, and welcome to MacBack 64. So this is the demo to MacBack 64, which is on Steam Greenlight right now. I would recommend you all vote for it. Uh, it's sort of nostalgia bait, but it's kind of nostalgia bait that I enjoy because it's like, hey, we're trying to take what all the old games really did well, and we're going to make that, right? Um, and it's not exactly something you'll see newer games do. You'll see newer game apply sort of the ideas of the older, sort of six, Nintendo 64 SNES generation games, uh, but not not quite the same. Uh, playing Assassin's Creed isn't quite the same as playing Banjo Kazooie. I'm gonna say just off a off a limb. So we're gonna play level one. Uh, gonna really quickly play Boom Beach, right? So right off the bat. This is the game. It's MacBat 64, if you didn't know. Well, I'm playing a demo. Uh, and you can download this also in the description below. Uh, you have these golden coin balloons. Or balloon coins, I guess. You can see there's one over there. Uh, I'm moving around with the arrow keys and I'm pressing space to jump. And it looks like I can jump like infinitely, but I don't think it's actually infinite. I think it's like almost infinite, but not quite. Yeah, okay, so there's a limit. Hold on. I like how um, old school the textures are. Ooh, and the text boxes. I feel like it should ask for like a prompt. I feel like it should say, hey, press Z to talk to the character. But, you know, just have random text boxes popping out of nowhere. Uh, this, this works, I guess. Um, so really quickly, let's go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so it's 9. So you can jump 9 times. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, okay. That's kind of a limit on the platforming. Honestly, one thing I would like to say from this game right off the bat uh, is that it doesn't provide a remarkable amount of challenge, uh, which isn't terrible. I mean, those older games, games were like a lot harder, but that doesn't necessarily make them better, right? Um, these animations are kind of cute. Let's really quickly talk to this owl, because remember, okay, so when we spawned, right? Can I actually, like, exit the game? Oh. Herpter. Shout out to Psychdro and Marcus Horn and Jay Moser. Uh, it's a really cool game. I legitimately want to see it come out, and I'm probably going to buy it when it comes out. And maybe make a f I'll make a full video? Let me know if you'd like to m uh, see me do, like, some kind of Let's Play t deal on this. Okay, why did I move out of the way? The whole point... Okay, so, Psychro, if you're watching, uh, can you make a way to exit the level from the pause menu? That would be great. Also, I love whatever this font is. This is great. I love that. So, when you first plop into the world, the first thing you're going to see is this owl with a very interesting animation. I don't know if I like that. But, obviously, the first thing the player is going to do is going to come here and talk to the owl. And actually, that's very useful information. Did you know you can turn your camera with Q&E? So naturally the first thing the player is going to do is look around. He probably sees the coin that was over there, grabs it because it's right in range. Uh, we haven't yet gotten a tutorial on how to jump, which is interesting. Can I proc this button without jumping? Yes I can. That was kind of awkward. Um, so that was, um, this is one thing that the older generations of games did very well was it had you explore a lot. And this is something that MacBat really takes to heart, right? It has a lot of focus on platforming. Oh, this is the dart gun thing, right? Sorry. It's been about a week since I completed this demo. So that was an enemy. I kind of wish I got to talk to him, but you know, whatever. Collect some coins, because we don't really know what they're for, but why not, right? And this is what a lot of the older games used to do. You used to just pick up stuff because they were on the way to what you wanted to do, right? And this is what a lot of newer games still do. I mean, Pokemon will be the prime example of this, of just, here's a world, and it's an open world, so go explore it, right? And because you would be running around this world, you'd be like, oh, I'll just um, do this. You would run across NPCs and they'd be like, Hey, can you get me five balloon coins for my uh, secret car experiment? And you'd be like, oh, okay, sure. And then you'd play like a car mini game or something, right? MacBat uh, seems to take that element at heart, at least. Also, can I not swim? 
Oh no, I can swim. Oh, he puts on little goggles! Oh, can I get like... Oh. I guess I can see underwater then. Can I maneuver my camera? Is there a way to move my camera up and down or am I like locked at this awkward sort of angle? Hold on, if I fly up, the camera go Yeah, the camera kind of flies up with me. Okay, so the camera definitely goes up with me, but when I go down... That's some weird angling there. I'm not entirely sure what the camera's doing. Let's talk to you, money bag. Which I know you're a money bag because I've played this before, but... Okay, this is annoying. What is this camera? Hold on. Am I, like, focused? Hold on. So you probably see at the bottom here, it says focus. I'm pretty sure that's a thing you're supposed to activate. Okay, I got the camera to kind of work. Okay, this is super finicky. It wasn't this bad when I was playing it on my own, but now that I'm like worried, I guess, about it, it's like messing up. I lost my insights, could you find them for me? My insights are coins, relax. Yeah, I, I could figure that out. You didn't have to ask, tell me to relax. <laughs> Although maybe, Maybe this- is there a way to improve this text? Because keep in mind, this is probably what the game is, right? I've- I've been told that this is kind of an older, like, version of the game. Uh, so I think it would be prudent of me, as someone who is super interested in game design, to sort of look for flaws and see, okay, how can- how would this be improved? So this person's text, right? Well, this bag, rather. Could you find them- what? They go away? Alright, this camera's really annoying. Uh, can we just get, like, full control over- Okay, so WASD also controls my movement, and so do the arrow keys. Uh, the mouse... Oh god, I move- I click things. Okay, the mouse doesn't actually do anything. So, here's a thought. Either make the mouse control the camera, or make WASD control the camera, because this is super annoying. Oh wait, I have Q and E, I guess. It kind of works, it's just when you get zoomed in at a really awkward angle. Um, okay, so hold on, let me show you this. I think what's happening here, yeah, so when the camera's up against a wall, it can't actually move backwards, is what's going on there. And so that's what's getting this awkward angle where I can't really do anything. I can kind of zoom around, gets me a little space, and then I can like walk to the beach. Oh god. The controls seem to be from camera and not around Mac back, right? So if I go under the camera, uh, when I run past the camera, the controls will keep going down. Which makes sense, obviously. I'm, I'm not entirely sure if there's another way you would do that. Um, oh god. So I was talking about improving this guy's dialogue. Honestly, that's probably the last thing you want to be caring about. You probably want to care about your movement mechanics first. Uh, but I don't know, this feels very clunky, doesn't it? It's like, hey, could you find my insides for me? Like, couldn't you just say, hey, I- all my coins are gone, or I lo I dropped five of my coins, could you find them for me? And it'd be like, just like a clear thing, hey, uh, there are coins all over the world, go find them, right? Very simple, straightforward. Uh, thanks for that banana lag. <laughs> This is always fun. When you find something in the world, so earlier on I picked up that banana, and while exploring the world I happened to find a use for that banana, which as a player is super satisfying because you feel like you've sort of done your job, right? Or you've helped someone unintentionally. Whoa. I didn't do that. The camera did that on its own. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Focus? I'm pretty sure there was like a button to focus but I can't remember what it was. Yeah, okay, so I'm not touching the camera. The camera auto pans uh, around certain points, which is actually kind of a really good thing, but I don't know why you would do it in this space. Oh, I can't control my camera. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so by the way, this is the end of the level. Every single time you reach um, one of these little MacBat 64 boxes in the style of the older of the, not cartridges, the box style of N64 games. Uh, that's the end of the level, and there's two levels in this demo. Hopefully I'll remember what I'm saying, I'm sorry. 
got kind of sidetracked explaining the mechanics of the game, but one thing I would like to see is maybe something more to the movement. Right now, having the 9 jump limit is kind of interesting, right? Because it gives you a lot of freedom in how you move, and it's you can still use WASD to manage your momentum and stuff, but I can't help but feel like um, it's not complex enough. So, like, thinking about what type of player would be playing this game, it's people who played Banjo-Kazooie, people who played Spyro the Dragon from, like, PS1, right? Um, is sort of the primary audience, and Spyro especially has, like, some really cool movement to it. Okay, so now we get a balloon! Thank you! I guess we just get rewarded with balloons, huh? Thank you, friends! Are we gonna end up swimming? Okay, that's fine. Um... And the thing about those games that I feel like this game didn't take to heart, and this is kind of the point I was trying to make before, is that those games were open world, right? But they didn't have open worlds in like proper levels. I mean, Spyro had kind of a level system to it, but it was very much like the levels were interconnected is what I'm trying to get at, right? So you're going to see when I finish this level, I do like the tree. That's pretty cool. Like having a sort of balcony outlook thing. Um, you're going to see when I finish this level in a second here, I'm going to get kicked back to the main menu screen. And on that main menu screen, uh, whoa, I can get stuck in here. No, I can't. Okay, sweet. On that main menu screen, is I'm going to select a different level, and this is something a lot of games nowadays will do. Um, in fact, let's just go ahead and show it now. Hey, I completed the world! Surprise doesn't say like World 1 or something, but you know, whatever. Uh, hopefully next up it'll tell me about the, um, the focused thing, because I know that's a thing you need to be aware of. Okay. Now, this has an advantage over open world, this level select menu, in that it's a lot easier to pick where you want to go. Players are much, it's much easier to get to the content you want to go. Side note, I love the symbolism in like opening a book. I don't know if you guys caught on to that. It's like, oh, I'm going into a world, right? You open a book, you're going to a different world. That's its own thing, right? So the advantage of doing this over open world, it's just easier on the player to run around. But I think one of the things that Spyro and Banjo-Kazooie did that was really interesting was that you just run around the world and not really have to deal with a level suck menu and having like a non-linear way to approach levels, which was really cool. And Mac Mac kind of has non-linearity, but... Hello? Okay, sure. Mac Mac, Mac Mac kind of has non-linearity, but in like a linear way, you know? So at the back there, um, spooky ghosts are spooky, back there, in level one, when you... You could have gotten the coin and then forgotten about the banana. You would have gone back to get the banana. Um, but it's not as crazy as it was in the Spyro games. Because in Spyro, you didn't collect one banana. You collected 20 bananas in like 10 different worlds, right? Um, and this game sort of takes what those games does and made it smaller, right? Which... I get- I understand that you kind of might need to do that if you're like a one or a two man team trying to make this type of game. Like on your own, you don't want to overshoot, right? When you're making your first game, that's probably like a big reason why your game would fail. It's like you tried to do too many things at once, you tried to include too many features, and that screwed you up. But it does seem like a real pity that we don't have the massive explorable world in MacBat that we did in games like Spyro and in games like Banjo-Kazooie. Another side note to mention, I'm not actually going to play this level, I guess, because <laughs> I'm too busy talking. I wonder if these guys will hurt me. Another side note... Ooh. Did that guy, like, affect my camera angle? No, my focus changed. Okay, fair enough. So, one thing to note about... I, I love the kinematics on this guy, so... Okay, I'll talk about the chair in a sec. One thing to note about games like Spyro is that the movement felt very realistic for a dragon, right? 
Um, which is kind of important to note because Spyro couldn't fly. Which is very weird for a dragon, but the thing is Spyro felt heavier, he was much harder to control, and therefore the challenge in playing the game got was much more interesting, it was much more intense. Mac Back is very much like he just WASD for very simple movement, right? Uh, and you don't really move very fast. One of the things that was really enjoyable about, about Spyro was his charge, his ramming, and it added a lot of complexity just to moving around. You had fun just moving around because you were trying to maximize how long can I go just moving as fast as I can. And it's kind of a shame that MacBack doesn't implement that. Uh, granted, they're n it's not a gigantic world, so maybe making you run around as fast as Spyro would have would be a bad idea, right? Because you'd be like, oh, I'm moving so fast, and then blah. Um, I really don't think he needs to fly as high as he does. I mean, granted, his jumps themselves are very small, so you can actually get a lot of horizontal height out of them. I guess especially when you have a lot of trees, the movement's fine. Because if you have a lot of trees to jump back and forth to, what is the camera doing, man? Okay, now it's catching up, it's catching up. Does the camera move slower than my character? I guess so. Um, you get a lot of horizontal movement out of MacBat. And it it can be fun if you're like jumping from tree to tree like this if you're trying to explore like up a mountain uh, I would love to see some Just bigger levels I guess is what my main complaint so far looking at the demo is and again This is kind of an older version of the demo according to I believe Psychro mentioned it um, We'll we'll have to see how the game is doing on Steam on Greenlight and how it'll be when it comes out now Really quick mechanical thing for any developers out there. This is something I like to see. When you're on a slope, um, having the character turn like this really just sort of enhances the feel of the character in a really cool way. Um, if I were making a game, the character would just be standing straight upright because I think you would have to either... Well, I think he's just... Is he just turning the model here? I think it's like the same pose and everything, it just turns upward. Um, for me, I would have just raised the elevation on any sort of slope, is what I'm thinking I would do, because that's what I do when I'm messing around with game development tools, specifically Unity in my free time. I do like the design of the ghosts, the ghost balloon thingies. They're kind of creepy. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, they're a little bit unsettling, which I quite like. It would be kind of cool if um, MacBat took, some, took something of a darker look um, in retrospect to games like Banjo-Kazooie. Like, it tried to be more serious in comparison. I wish I knew what this focus mechanic was. I'm sure there's someone around here who can tell me. Let's take a look around. I love Robbie Beanland for the game boss. That's either a reference to the game or maybe like a one of the developer's other games? I don't know. Uh, let's ask you. Hey there, long time no see. Yeah, I lost them again. Don't look at me like that. Aww, don't worry, I won't judge you too hard. Okay, you can totally fit through there, that's BS. I think I will really quickly, for those of you who want to see it, uh, I may as well complete the tutorial for you. Have you seen those ghostly balloons? They scare me? Yeah, me too, man. Just for funsies, because... There's not really much left for me to do. You're supposed to get um, a dark, another dart gun. I wish there was a tutorial for the dart gun. I'm sure there is in the full version, but it's not here. Uh, anyways, here's the big secret of the level. Once you explore enough, you'll find the underwater area. You'll be like, oh, I'm so smart. I found the secret area. And it's like very rewarding to find because you not only get two coins, but the um, button that opens this area. Which is actually one of the really cool things about open world exploration style games is like when you have areas like this, when you have like that snowball effect, right? You've been running around an area for like 10 minutes just looking at everything and you're like, hmm, I think I can solve this. Hmm, I, I, I wish I had more control of my camera. I think uh, I need to find a way to get in that cave, right? So like the 10 minutes I've been just walking here, I don't know how to get in the cave and I wouldn't know until I found the secret underwater path, but once I found that underwater path, I found the opening to the cave, which gave me the two coins and a balloon, and these coins will let me 
get the balloon from this guy which gives me the four balloons and it also pro gave me the button so the snowball effect i think is very rewarding in the exploration style game and guess what i can do with this i can kill all the enemies i wish there was like an ammo indicator and i kind of hope this isn't all there is to the combat because if the game is just exploration i guess that's okay because like the movement the movement's fine it's acceptable but Oh, I'm surprised they just show the balloon. I'm surprised he doesn't say, Oh, wow, you got them. Here's the balloon for, as a thank you, right? I think I would have liked that a little bit better. But whatever. Small note. I, I kind of hope there's not just exploration to this game. I kind of hope it adds a little bit of combat. Granted, I don't know the size and scope of this game. I, I know there's at least one person working on it, which isn't very much. Hello, monkey. This game needs a snow world. Uh, tell that to Psychro, man. Yeah, this movement's just not very satisfying on like a base ground level. It's a lot more enjoyable when you have a lot of things to jump around on, when you have a lot- when you can abuse the movement mechanics in a cool way. Oh wait, shoot, am I- did I just miss the level end? I do like the music as well. I do think it's pretty good. This is a different music to the menu, isn't it? Hold on, let's open the book. Yeah, so this is the same as the original main menu song that we heard at the beginning. Uh, just listen to this for a second. This is pretty good, I have to say. I really like the music in this. Um... Oh, I only follow one of these guys, so there's at least three people working in the game. <laughs> and for- there was a voice on the monkey I didn't even notice. They have sound effects? Um, from Soundpipe, I guess. Ooh. That passed already, didn't it? I never watched this part. Well, that was exciting. Um, so yeah, Psytro and friends, I am excited for a full release. Um, if you guys are interested in this game, make sure to check the green, the Steam green light in the description. And yeah, thank you all for watching. Uh. See you guys in my next video.